Hi, I'm Bill Snodgrass, and in this video, we're going to talk about a, a particular sports situation that you may be shooting. We're going to be talking about volleyball. First of all, we'll, we'll kind of overview some consideration you might have for your camera and your equipment. And we'll talk about the sport a little bit so that you can uh, have a, a sort of a, a strategy for composition, for composing your pictures. And then we'll look at some special camera considerations because of how the sport is played. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So this video is going to be intended for a young photographer who's kind of learning their way around um, a camera that has the ability to override the fully automatic mode or a more experienced photographer who just simply has never shot sports or never shot volleyball in particular. So we'll start off with camera considerations. Most of the time in volleyball or any sport for that matter, you're going to want to, to freeze the action. You want, you're going to want to capture clear, crisp pictures of the athletes doing, doing their, their thing. And in order to do that, you're going to want a high shutter speed. Um, my personal preference is to, to start at around 1,000, uh, and, and then if I can get a little higher and still keep things going, I'll do that. If you have to go lower than 1,000, uh, 800 maybe will be okay. You'll get a few pictures that it won't work out for. And if you get down to 500, I, I tell kids in my photography club, if you get down to 500, you're just counting on getting a little bit lucky once in a while, and some number of pictures will look good, and a lot of pictures will look, you know, blurry. So starting off for a, a, a one one thousandth of a second shutter speed is a good thing for me. Um, I, I will run that up a little bit if, I, if there's enough light. Most of the gyms that that I have been in. Um, if you, if you can get that high, you're doing a pretty good. You're doing pretty good. In order to get the shutter speed up there, you're gonna have to run the ISO up, and, and uh, you're gonna kind of have to compromise with how much shutter speed can I get versus how high do I have to raise my ISO? Because we know the higher the ISO, the more uh, artifacts and, and distortion, color distortion, and uh, noise is going to be introduced. So uh, you sort of have to do uh, some trials to see where your camera is gonna start. Uh, losing losing fidelity in the color and the and creating noise. Um, I'm I'm fortunate enough with my camera, the 77D. I can I can do 12 um, 12,800 and still have really clear pictures with very very little noticeable noise in it. And I can go to the next stop up uh, as well, which would be the the 25600. I can do that and then I begin to start seeing some of the noise. That allows me to have my shutter speed up. Uh, to, a, to a good place. But shutter speed is the thing that you're going for and you're going to want to adjust everything around that so that you can get that shutter speed up and freeze that action. Lens wise, if you're, if you're using a point and shoot, you, you're going to, I never recommend using digital zoom. If you're shooting on a, a DSLR, on a crop sensor, the, the 55-2, the, the 55-250 lens uh, gives a really good range of, of composition. Um, if, if you, you could also use the very popular, the, the 7300 is a very popular sports lens. Uh, that's, a, that's a good range. Um, when I shoot, when I shoot the, at the 55, I almost never really go that far out when, I, when I'm trying to do volleyball composition. The, the volleyball, volleyball is played on a basketball court usually. That's 90 feet from end to end. So the, the distance that you're going to be if you're at the top of the bleachers or you're down on the floor on one end and the players are on the other, um, you, the, to, to go all the way out to 55 is uh, an unusual situation. Now on a full frame sensor, on a, a camera with a full frame uh, sensor, obviously uh, you're, you're going to go further towards those telephoto ranges. Uh, so, so having a good telephoto lens and a fast telephoto lens uh, is is a good idea. By fast, I mean that the aperture goes down low uh, to like 1.4 or 1.2.8 or 1.3.5 or something like that. If you can get down, low, the lower you can get, the more light that goes in. Also, um, that allows you to adjust your, your ISO down. So, for the camera, high shutter speed, do whatever it takes to get your shutter speed up, and then you're going to want a nice telephoto lens so that you can zoom in on the action. Or if you're using a point and shoot, you're going to want to use that, you know, towards the, the middle range so you can, you can compose very nicely. If you're, if you're trying to use the digital zoom on a point and shoot camera, that's probably not going to give you the quality results that you, that you, that you want. Now, in any sport, being able to anticipate the shot and, and anticipate how to compose the shot 
uh, is a good idea. So to, to, you need to know a little bit about the sport that you're shooting. Um, and so volleyball is a, is a very inter interesting sport to watch. It, it begins with a serve, and that's the easiest thing to take pictures of because you know where it's going to begin. You know what's going to happen. You know the service is going to take place you know, on the back line, so you can anticipate that very well. What happens next then becomes very, very challenging to anticipate. The service should go over the net. Most of the time it's going to go in, into the second row, and there's a, a player there. Um, who has a special function of being able to, to dig that serve and also dig the spikes and things like that. So that player, is, it is possible that you can anticipate that player is going to be involved in a lot of plays. Not always, but a lot of plays. The next thing that happens is that player tries to put the ball into the air and another player will then try to pass the ball to another player, the third, they get three tries. That third player is going to try to hit the ball very hard or very aim it very particularly into the other team's defense to try to score the point. So all you can count on 100% sure is that the person serving the ball is going to serve it. Um, the, the gameplay will go back and forth. The, so the serve will go over. There'll be the, the person will, will dig it out. And then there will be the pass or the set. Sometimes they, they call it pass, set, spike. So th those are, are, are the kind of things. So the set is going to be very unpredictable because that person who's getting the ball that's being uh, driven towards the floor, ideally, they're, they're doing the best they can to keep it from hitting the, the floor. So the, the, the second part of the play is very unpredictable. And a lot of times that pass is going to go to one of the sides of the front line. So they have people on the front row. They're called outside hitters. And they will try to hit the ball very hard into the other team's, uh, other team's defense. Th that is a real general overview. And then it repeats on the other side. So it's the, the, the dig, the pass, the spike, dig, pass, spike, dig, pass, spike. Um, so it's very unpredictable. And this is one of the challenges of volleyball is that if you're hitting the ball, you're trying to be unpredictable. That makes it good for your offensive strategy to be unpredictable. It makes it bad for photography. So understanding how the game plays, you're, you're going to have to resolve yourself to picking, uh, picking different players or different parts of the court and being able to, to watch that. One thing you can do in any, any sports, uh, in, in any photography situation, is you can have the camera up to this eye and have this eye open, and your brain can filter back and forth between what it's seeing through the lens and what it's seeing through the, uh, through, through the eye, and it can help you to anticipate when something is going to happen or maybe give you a, a, a little bit of a head start on moving the camera over. One special consideration about volleyball is where are you going to set your focus? So the, the fact that volleyball is very, very much of the game is played a half a body length above the shoulders. They're, they're jumping up and hitting down. They're, they're, uh, an awful lot of the game takes place above the shoulders and as much as an arm's length above the shoulders. This makes it challenging to to decide where you're going to focus. So if you're focusing vertically, you might want to move the, the focus dot, whatever your focal point is, down off center a little bit, and then put that focus dot on the, the numbers or the, or, the, or the chin or the neck or something in this area. And that will put some extra room above the player's head where the ball is probably going to be in frame. If you're shooting horizontally, then again, you might want to drop the, the focal point down below the center, um, and, and then uh, again, that'll give a, a little bit of extra room above. But you, you're, going to want to, you're going to want to put that focus dot um, high on the player. Whereas with, with, with basketball, you, you can put on the belly button or the belt or the, or the numbers, and probably until they get to the shot or the rebound, a lot of basketball is played in the middle of the body, not so with volleyball at all. Most, most of volleyball is gonna be played above the shoulders. So you need to consider that when you're putting your focus dot in. Last consideration that I think is special, and this is reprising what I just said a few moments ago about the way the game is played. Remember, 
they're trying to they're trying to surprise the other team and that's they're also therefore going to be surprising you as a photographer so in a quick recap high shutter speed a, a nice telephoto lens uh, anticipate the shots as best you can and be reconciled to the fact that you're going to you're going to miss a lot of shots because you were expecting it to be over here and it ended up being over there. And then the third consideration is um, putting that focus dot a little below center so that you, you're moving the whole composition up in order to get the ball. So, um, hope this has been helpful as, a, as, a, as an immersion into photographing volleyball. Uh, if it has, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll do more of these how-to videos. I'm, I've actually been asked to do these videos by the, the yearbook sponsor uh, because he wants to help his, uh, his yearbook staff and the photography club to do better sports photos. So as the year goes on, uh, more and more of these. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, um, leave me a comment or a question, and I'll see you in the next video.